Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me and see my screen here? If you can, just type yes. Okay, excellent. Thanks, guys. Uh, all right, welcome to the uh, live trading webinar here at Bookmap uh, with Scott Polsini, futures trader. Uh, we do this every Thursday, 10 a.m. Uh, and uh, it's live analysis uh, and uh, his way of trading. I get insight to a professional here. Uh, he's been trading for over 20 years uh, and a large, large size, things that we will never probably in one day trade as much as he used to trade uh, back in the day. Uh, so, uh, and learn about his trade management as well. Uh, so uh, you guys know who Scott is. Uh, if not, um, well, I can put that into the chat. Uh, he does offer education and mentoring services. I'll put this into the chat uh, over time so that uh, the, uh, you guys can see it. Uh, and I've uh, got to go through some disclosures uh, and then we'll turn it right over to Scott. Uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. So know what you're getting involved in here uh, with. It is not a, a trade copier room at all. It is for education only. Risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So the, the gem here is we get to peek over Scott's shoulder uh, as he is trading these markets. Uh, Scott, are you there? Yep, hear me? All right, excellent. So uh, yeah, go for it and uh, let's uh, let's get going here if you wanna share your screen. Did you fall into a uh, tin can, Bruce? What's, what's your that? Audio. I said, did you fall into a tin can? The oh, audio is okay. Terrible. Yeah, I, I've been That's having, terrible. okay. Sounds I'm like sorry about that. I, I actually can uh, fix that. I've been having a lot of problems with my headset, um, but uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll plug in here once we get you up and running and uh, I'll fix that. So sorry about that. That's <laughs> all right. Just, just messing with you. <laughs> all all right. right. Uh, let's see here. My screen. Yeah, and then I am going to rebroadcast it here. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Shoot. Okay. All right, we're all set, Scott. One second here. Obviously, crazy markets, headlines. Uh, I'm getting feedback, Bruce. I don't know if that's you or what. Okay. Hold um, on a minute here. Okay. So anyway, I was uh, I was just short here a little bit ago. There was a um, stop and hold here. You see. It's, close to 150 here you can see the uh, the sweeps 761 was part of that I, actually this was more than that it was 150 and then there's another you can see here it was two I have my um, SI indicator set on reset <clears throat> so this one was 105 and then 171 so 171 alone was threshold but you got almost 300 here and that's that's these two swipe sweeps that you see here with the white bubbles that's the zone. Um, I took this short aggressively out of here because, um, as you guys know, we've been using the lugs extensively as they are uh, pretty incredible, especially when you can tie them in real time biome. So we are below the yellow lug at the time and any any setups I get below the, they call this the directional, if I can get my jar working. This is the directional line. So anything below 
yellow, I will play short aggressively. Above yellow, above yellow, I'll play longs aggressively. I will still take longs here like I just did. I'll show you here in a second. Uh, but I need to see the setup, a full ATR, a retest, failure, and then I get an 80% of, of an ATR, and then I risk 80% of an ATR below the, the setup. I'll go over that here shortly. So I was short <clears throat> because aggressively because we're below the yellow lug, and... This is where I got in right here, and then we came down here, and then another setup occurred. You can see here, this is a Dumb and Dumber, 202 stop run. That's this zone, and this rejected, so I got out 80% of an ATR, uh, and then we retested this zone. So remember, I'll only go long the yellow lug, I mean below the yellow lug, if we get a full ATR retest failure, and that's exactly what we did, and I got in here, so now I just flipped to long. So currently long there. My expectation is at least back to the yellow lug here. I'll watch closely, uh, which, you know, when you get the lugs confluent with other things, you can see here it's confluent with VWAP. That those are really good areas to, um, that will most likely affect the market. So if we come back here and we struggle at all, I'll just get out of, I'll get out of those two. But if we rip through here, then my expectation is back up to the red. So you guys got to remember though, this is, these are, uh, treacherous markets right now because the headlines come out of nowhere and you know it doesn't matter how good your setup is you know the volume it's some that's a, a change in scenario right so new new volume can come through it's it's just very uh, treacherous with these headlines and as we saw Earlier in the week, you know, they just randomly just say something and like the Zelensky guy or whatever his name is from Ukraine said something like sarcastically and the market's just like you know, fell apart. It's just it's just not real great trading environment. So either cut your size down or just don't trade right now. So um, I know it's tempting because it is moving around, but it's a lot of it is just, you know, haphazard. Uh, nonsensical moves and then you're also going to start to get I guarantee you you're going to start getting this in the next few days like these false headlines like you know someone in the, that has like connections with the media will come out and you know obviously put on a position that come out and say something that's completely not true and then the market will rip and then they'll say it's not true and then it'll come back they made their millions and then they're out it's like if you think that doesn't happen then you're in the wrong business but <clears throat> just be aware of all that because Again, the volume is one thing, but if something comes out, it just negates the volume, right? Or the setups, I should say. All right, so I will consider going long here in ES. Do we get, we need not get a um, ATR above this most recent zone. We'll go over all these zones here in a second. So the ATR right now is 7.6, you can see right here. I use a five minute ATR. So we did not get seven points above here. So here's the zone. Sell ice. I want to see seven points above. I want to see a retest. I want to, and then a failure. Um, see those snakes. I'm gonna just swipe. Here we go. I thought that was an add-on from the map marketplace. Let's go through the. So anyway, on this move down, we just built new lugs. You can see here. This was all at the open. I didn't do anything in this market. Stops freezing here. All right. So you had a huge double whammy here. You had uh, 1,500 buy ice, and then you had almost a thousand stops, and then another 600 stops, so 1,600, 1,700 stops, and then uh, 1,600. Uh, I got to turn this down, but I'm probably going to miss the headline if it comes out. But again, I don't trade headlines. It's not like a jump in a market, but you know, if I have a position on, I want to know what what's going on. But I don't. I don't trade headlines. You, you, it's useless, right? You're not as fast. These algos pick up the headlines, and the move is already done by the time you even go to click the mouse. So, I highly recommend you don't try trading the headlines. So anyway, this was the first double whammy. Right through there, then we had another one. I just had to do a different color, but this was also a double whammy. You can see it right there, right through that one, and I. You may be asking why didn't I short this as well? Well, because we were right at the blue lug at the time, and I do not take trades until we build new lugs. So at the time, because these lugs are so powerful as far as support and resistance, until we build new ones. So we were about right here when those those uh, things started firing off the double whammies. I was not going to short those setups into the blue lug, right? So now that we built new lugs, 
now I can go, I can, I'll, I'll take shorts aggressively below this with this expectation and I'll take longs aggressively above this. We are above this right now, so I can actually jump in this trade. Technically, I can jump in the trade because we're above the yellow lug, but when we just build new lugs, we tend to, the markets tend to bounce around them. So I'm, I'm still going to be conservative here. If we, if we would have done this and came back to the yellow lug and we got a, a volume signal, then I would be aggressive out of here. But since we just built new ones and we're just dancing around this yellow, I'm going to wait for a full. So we saw that set up a full ATR retest failure. And I'll go long there. If it breaks, then I'll, I'll go short on the same setup as long as nothing else new comes in. So see here again we still have not gotten a full ATR above here and the top of this zone is at 13 13 half so we need to see at least 21 right, right? 7.4 yeah so seven and a half points so 22 we need to see for this to be a, a potential long setup right there's a zone I need to see 22 I need to see a retest to at least the top of the zone failure and then I'll get in and my stop will go seven points below there or eight points below there. <clears throat> Actually, eighty percent of an eight tier. All right, so let's see if that can happen. Let's see what's going on with our Nasdaq? Just hanging around. So Nasdaq's ATR is uh, twenty-seven point two eight. So ATR eighty percent of an ATR is twenty-two points. So based on this zone here. I put my stop 22 points below here. All right, so I got in 80% of an ATR. I went full ATR retest failure, I got in, and now my stop's here, and see if we can get to move back up to that yellow lug. Again, very, very treacherous markets. Anything can come out, and just this thing could just swipe straight down. So I'm not I'm basically holding my breath on any trades I'm taking right now. All right. Um, Love the geopolitical environment, huh? Yeah, it's real fun. It's real easy to <laughs> trade. Again, we haven't even started with the fake headlines yet. You wait, watch next week. Watch how many fake, fake news stories come out. Um, when things start to really like start to settle down, you, it happens every time. Mm. It's just guys mess with the market that have you know ties to the media. Um, so anyway, you know the volume is normal right now. You can see here. So this is relative volume. This is what you really want to keep an eye on when you're trading, right? If you see this thing start to dive below here, like this kind of tr you know trade again, this was overnight, but. Even though it's overnight, it's still relevant because this is just this is all this is gauging as this exact time period for the last 30 days. So even if you see this overnight, you don't say, well, it's because it's overnight. Well, even overnight, this is low, right? Because it's basing it on the last 30 days. This is a different relative volume than this relative volume. We've talked about this before. So be careful what relative volume you're using, right? So this is. Yeah, see, so see how this, this is, so the first relative volume I just showed you, that's in Sierra Chart and other um, software charting programs have it. That's based on this exact five minute period for the last 30 days. Think or swim, this is based, this is just a simple based on the last 60 bars, right? So you got to be careful because if you don't know the difference, you're like looking at the opening, you're like, wow, look at that, man, we're six times normal. No, that's not six times normal, it's six times more than the last 60 bars so every day when the market opens normal is about seven times because it's basing on the last 60 bars so you can see that difference versus or that relative volume versus this at the open which is right here we didn't even get look at the difference we didn't even get to normal so that was right here look at this this was about 50 percent normal's right here 100 percent is normal right so you see the difference? We didn't even get to a normal opening. If you look at think or swim, you're thinking it's seven times volume. So just be very careful what kind of relative volume you're using. This is very, this is the one I use mainly, right? Because I wanna see, again, you can change your, your settings. Mine's based on the last 30 days. I wanna see, hey, is this normal volume for the last 30 days? And what we've seen over the last couple of weeks is just, you know, It'll just dry up like this, and then that's when you get algo to death, right? So when you see this kind of volume, you want to 
if you can avoid trading when, when you see this kind of volume you know the big money's coming in running over the algos you can expect extended moves so that was long-winded for keep an eye out on, on the uh, on the uh, relative volume all right so i think we got an atr above here pretty close let's see NQ stop stop sell NQ 262 contracts. That's not good. So we're back here. So this is, could be a potential another setup. And this is ironic. I was just talking about this yesterday. How we had this discussion last week, Bruce and I, on how I won't add currently to a setup that's in the same area as my first setup because I don't want double the size on, you know, for the basically the same area. And Bruce, Bruce's argument is, well, you, that's just like more confirmation of the area and the way you want to trade. And there is something to be said for that. I just haven't done enough research on it. So, I, so my point is, do I want to put on another brand new position based on this setup right here? But what I can do is let's draw this zone, and I can trail my stop a little bit, so you can see the stop run here. It's two fifteen. You can see the swipes. We call them snakes in the room. White snake. This is. We're thinking about playing uh, white, white snake music too when these these occur, if you guys are interested in that. We play the Jeffersons moving on up when we want the market to rally. Hey, you can get those sound bites and put it into your alerts. <laughs> can you really? Yeah, why not? <laughs> now that's funny. I, I might do that. <laughs> so it just plays, just plays a little snippet of the song every time a snake comes in. Yeah, sweet. yeah. Here, here, yeah. here I go again, uh, or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Showing your age, Bruce. Showing your age. Oh, God. I, that video is still young burned. Young don't even know. They're probably like, what is white snake? What are you talking about? <laughs> All right. So, so I can trail my stop now based on this new new zone, right? So uh, again, ATR is 27.74. So that's basically 22 points below here is an 80% of an ATR, right? So this this is at uh, 85.50. So that's 65.50, 63.50. So I can trail it up 10 points. It's not a big, huge deal, but... You know, once if this starts rolling up, it is a you know you you may be getting fifty point stop. Um, you can where you can trail your stop, right? So I trail my stops not based on my PL. Seven hundred contracts. Not based on my PL, based on real time volume events, right? So that's why I just trailed that's because this new event came in. So I'm not going to add to this. Uh, I'm just going to keep it on for right now, especially in this environment. I don't really want to have a double position on, but. Let's see what's going on here. This is not threshold, so I'm not going to draw it again. I need to see 700, especially for what's been flowing through here and it's in between these zones. So we'll just let this play out. This did not get a full ATR above here, though, I don't think. Let's say it was 7.67. Top sell and Q, 172 contracts. Right. There's another setup. So I'm not going to move this stop now based on this new setup. I'll just let this stop me out. I'm not going to. I'm not going to keep trailing a stop down. Right. I'll trail it up, but I'll just stop out, and then I'll, if this holds, I'll just get right back in. Right. So let's delete this zone because we did get an ATR above there. This was the first zone that I traded off of because we have a new setup right down here. that stopped out but if this holds remember i still need to see now another atr retest failure because we're still below the yellow load and now it looks like we're headed down to the uh to the blue load so what i should be doing here is getting short so let's see how far we i just want to make sure we're not on top of a lug and then i will short this aggressively 22 points which is 80 percent of an atr So we're right at baby lug right now. You can see here that's one of the one of the. It's not as important as blue lug, but we could bounce off here. But I'll still I won't. I'll still initiate a short is what I'm saying because we still have another hundred basically hundred points down to this lug. We get over here. So 22 points. That was at. Uh, this is probably. It's at 71, 51, 49. Initiate a short there. So 
So again, I'm playing aggressively out of this most recent uh, setup. One thing I don't want to do, hold on one second here. I'm going to delete that for a second because I'm going to show you guys something else I used and see how that but it keeps shutting down on me today for some reason. Uh, it tells me if the market is oversold or overbought, and I think we're oversold right here, so I don't think I want to. And Q, top, top sell NQ, 168 contracts. Hold on. see where we're probably going right right down this liquidity um so another thing i use i used it back if you guys ever follow me when i first started when the um it was at the first started doing this stuff with it was in we trade desk and there is a um it's the taz indicators but one of his indicators i don't really use the taz box as much you know I, you can see them on my charts but i don't really trade off them because the ludwig levels are much better in my opinion but the the product that is pretty unbelievable, not unbelievable, but it's really effective, right? So you can see here, this thing's called the edge. So you can see my headline, headlines and stuff, but this is, so this is showing you <clears throat> all the stocks in the, um, so this is S&P, let's, let's change it to NASDAQ and see what that looks like since we're trading that right now. Yeah, so all this is doing is showing you all the stocks that are in the, um, that comprise the NASDAQ 100, right? So when you get above here, this is the 70% line. So that means over 70% of, of the stocks are below their TAS five minute boxes, right? So the, ta the TAS stuff is just basically um, uh, market profile. So the five minute is just on a shorter time frame. So you can see here, that would just be like all these individual stocks. It's judging whether they're, this is the five minute NASDAQ right here, right? So it's judging whether they're below. This is, again, these are like mini market profiles. This is resistance. This is support. This is point of control. So this is telling me that, you know, 70 plus percent of stocks are below their um, task boxes right now. So what happens all the time is once we get oversold or overbought meaning you see red or green above here so you can see let's see if i can hold on show you guys the actual gauge right so you can see here 74 percent stocks are below their task boxes so every time it doesn't have happen immediately you want to be very careful just fading a move meaning you're just going to buy but you don't want to you, you want to try to avoid initiating positions on the short side when this thing's oversold because it'll just revert back it does every time it gets up here i mean it can hang up here for a little bit we could go a little lower but i you do not you don't you want to be very cautious initiating shorts if we're above this seven this is the 67 percent line right so eventually it'll come back and then if i get a short signal then i'm fine at short but right here that's why i just canceled that nq trade because we're above that line and it's say like Yesterday, for example, we were up at uh, at the highs. I'll show you exactly what that looked like here. We were up at the highs, and I put in the room, be careful initiating longs here. That was right here. Kind of just like we're doing here. Um, and it, it, we sold off, it was right, it was like a probably half hour before the close, and we sold off like 18 points or something, right? Because these always, you have these algos that revert everything. So. Not that you just want to blindly short, you can come up with strategies to do that, but my point is you don't want to be initiating longs or shorts when this thing's above here. Um, it doesn't mean it can't keep going, but it just, like, I have a feeling this is going to go down and tag this, but uh, again, that that's very powerful to make sure you're not, you're not in oversold or overbought conditions. <clears throat> so let's see what happens here. Oh, this is where I stopped out. Okay. So I was basically an ad right in here anyway. And you see, I was kind of struggling because he's stuck. It's almost guaranteed this thing, you know, it's going to hold here and then do that. It's probably going to get filled first. But anyway, I'm not initiating shorts right now. This thing can come back quickly, too. It's not like we're going to sit here for an hour and wait for this thing. Like it'll, you know, this thing, will, you'll see. It'll do this and come all the way back. And then if we get a short signal, then it's go time. But I'm not going to short into this. You know, again, it may, it may go another 20, 30 points, but for what I was going to have to risk there, it's just not worth the risk, in my opinion. So, just 
just watch it for now. Let's see what's going on in ES. Any questions, Bruce? I know I'm covering a lot of stuff, but this is just stuff that we look at in the room, and this is an important piece. Yeah, no, no questions yet. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at our lugs. And the other thing too is, you know, so we're oversold, and now you're hitting some of these targets, these lug targets, right? Yeah, this one we went through, but then I got this one. So at any moment, this thing could just do that. So that's why I don't want to show it right here. So what I want to see is something like here that reverts back under the oversold conditions, and then I get a short setup right here, and then I'll take it, and then that'll be the target. So that's what I'm hoping for. Um, so we are below the yellow lug now. <clears throat> Again, I, I wouldn't enter it one we're oversold, but... I wouldn't have entered that ES setup that we were waiting to potentially go long aggressively anyway because we're still just bouncing around this. But now if I get an ES setup, you know, I will short it aggressively as long as we're not, you know, way oversold. So keep an eye on that. I would, again, I would love for this thing to pop up, get out of oversold conditions, come back up here, get a short signal, and then come back down. You know we're going to hit that eventually, and then probably down in the next blue lug, which is down at uh, 43.75. So that's what I'm hoping for here. Um, you know, if this just sits here and, and does nothing, if we go, because nothing new has come in since this, right? So if we come down full ATR, we still haven't got an ATR below here either, just like we didn't get an ATR above. So we don't know what this setup is, right? So I have broken ice, Titanic. Titanic is when the cell ice wins, or broken ice is obviously when they when it runs through it. We don't know what this setup is until it gets a full ATR. So it hasn't gotten a full ATR below or above. But if this eventually gets a full ATR below, comes back, retests, fails, because again, we're kind of right at the yellow lug, I will go short just as long as we're not way oversold. On the uh, on the edge, for some reason it keeps shutting down today too. So I have to keep an eye on to see if it. Uh... So again, it doesn't mean you just blind. You see this thing oversold, you you don't just blindly buy it because I've seen it oversold and like yesterday it got up to like ninety five percent, right? So you know you can use strategies with it to 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 fade the move, but you better make sure you're in an important area because it could keep going for a while and then it'll then it'll snap back. But I just don't like initiating positions when it's overbought or over. So. All right, enough on that. Uh, nothing else is really firing off. Let's see here. <clears throat> so make sure crude is um, crude rolled. You're in the uh, April contract now. Let's take a look here. This may be a long... Still hitting these stocks, so could go down a little more, fill that liquidity, and then rip. S and P stocks, stock sell ES, five hundred seventy three contracts. Was threshold sell sell stops, so we'll mark this zone. And this is now we'll trade off of this. It's not very. It's real close to threshold. I prefer bigger in these market environments, but I'll still trade off of it if it warrants. I'm not going to draw this ice zone because again, this was only 300, so I'm just drawing the stop run. Feeling that he's going to be it on the south side for a little bit now because of that reversion. What I will do now, though, because we are oversold, right? Now, 
I'm not going to take this aggressively because we're still below yellow lug, but if we go ATR retest fail, I will be glad to go long mess be, just for at least a, a, a pop because we're oversold, right? So let's see if we can finally get an ATR above here. ATR is uh, 7.51, so we need 7.5 points above here. Put us at 10.5. this 10 and a half retest fail I'll get an 80% of an ATR I'll go long my stop will go 80% below there and I'm expecting some type of bounce because this is so oversold it's not so oversold I've seen it worse but anything above that 70% line you want to really pay attention to let's get the CS going here so we got a signal in here pretty much the same I mean Again, this is just all 500 stocks. This is telling you out of the 500 stocks, 397 of the 500 are, are below their boxes, right? When you get that, you get the you get the reversion to the mean. Right? So we'll keep an eye on that. Give me an ATR retest, and I, we will go along this. So this is why I didn't want to short this on this on this other setup that came in. Right? When did we draw it? This one. Yeah. So it was this one. Remember, I stopped out. I stopped out here off of this white zone or beige zone. This came in, and I was going to short it aggressively, and then I canceled because we we're oversold. And you can see it's not really. I fully expect one more move down here to fill these guys. One hundred fifty contracts. But I'm expecting some kind of bounce here. Let's see what's going on. We just cannot get an ATR away from these zones. Let's see in here. So I still have the other crude contract up because it's still rolling. I, I hate this time of the month where it's. Where it's rolling because you got the volume in both both products so it's kind of split volume it makes it a lot tougher to trade it <clears throat> but i'm not really seeing anything here remember this sub chart is showing you net net right so there if there for example there's 200 buy ice 200 sell ice it's going to show a zero on here um it doesn't happen that often where you get dueling icebergs but it does happen i don't draw those zones obviously because you can't really see where i mean you can guess where it occurred so i just look for spikes but there's obviously some doing icebergs in here because you're not you heard the announcement or the alert and it's not uh, it's not showing on the sub sub chart. Um, but what I can do here, what I was looking at here before the that ES fired off, All right, so we're below yellow lug. I guess you didn't take, almost take the blue lug the first time down here. So in order for me to go long, I mean, technically this is a retest of this zone right now, right? We had this earlier. Here's your retest. If I could go long that, I might, just because there's new stuff in here. Yeah, this is first retest, so I'll, can, I'll go long this. Let's see. Oh, sweet 40, 41 ATR. That's splendid. So 32.64 is 80% of an ATR, so 33 ticks out of here. So on top of this zone is basically 70, 02, 01. 01 is, your, is my entry on this. All right, so some bigger picture stuff here. This is a really, really, really important area for crude, right? We talked about this in my room as well. Balance broke out. Where did it hold? I have I note one of the one of the four important areas of charting. Held came up here. Kind of a mess here, but this is this looks like a balance too. So you're kind of you know remember this is a gap. So we're breaking down here, so if this gets through here, you can see it already made one try right here, right? And it bounced, just like it did this time. It did it again. 
put in a buying tail. That's another one of the four important areas of charting. But here we go. Now it's coming back again. If this gets through here, this high volume node is the next stop. Right around 87. If it gets through there, then we're going to do one of these. So very important areas coming up here on crude. This could easily bounce, but if it rips through here, then this is the next stop. It's going to, it's almost 200 ticks away, $2 away. If we get through there, then you're going to get a serious sell-off, in my opinion. So let's see. It's there. But if this holds, I'm okay going long, right? I mean, it, that means it's still holding high volume, though. So we'll see what happens. All right. Could we finally get an ATR away from his own? Sure did. All right, so let's look at some bigger picture stuff here, too. So you can see here, this was, so the Fed minutes came out yesterday. We actually caught this long in the room. So you had a breakout of this balance through the high volume of that balance. What should have happened? This thing should have, you're competing with this bigger balance here, but we should have at least gotten to this zone, this high volume now. Right. Price March Iceberg sells EW. 150 contract. A little wait in a second. That those that volume split too. It's I hate I hate this time of the month. Um, I sound like a female. Anyway, so it comes up here. It should have come up here and it did not. And now what we did is we basically had a fail break out of both these things. This thing's in trouble, right? Obviously with the news headlines as well, but just from a just from a charting aspect, you know, this is small stuff. Right, but you can see, guys, this is the same stuff over and over and over. It doesn't matter what market you're looking at, right? Here's balance. Here's your high buying node. Launch from here. Balance broke down from this. Where do we hold? Prior high volume node. Came up here. Couldn't. So when markets, this is a bit, this market's in a bear state, right? When they break down, they will, they can retest and still be in a bear state. The bottom of prior balance or the high volume note and still be in a bear state. It only got to the bottom, it couldn't even get to there, and now we're back down here. So this is looking like that. If this gets through this prior zone, especially where this held, so right around you know, 43, 60 to 50, if it gets through there, then you're gonna get a pretty major solve in my opinion. So anyway, you know, we're kind of in no man's land now. We, we did this, we did this. This could hold and come back, or if this breaks, then we're coming back down, coming down to this, and then we'll see. But So chart, charting-wise, it doesn't look, like, doesn't look very clear, and especially with the new sideline, so just be careful. And we just, we can't get an ATR away from these zones. I don't know why. <laughs> Let's see what's going on here. At least I didn't short this so far. I still think this liquidity is going to get filled first, and then we will probably rip. All right, you can see the edge here is starting to pull back a little bit. <clears throat> so if this pulls back, then it'll open the door, and then I can, then I won't be afraid to short. Right? See, it's starting to pull back a little bit. Still close to oversold. I want to see like something like down in here, and then if I get a shorting setup, I have no problem shorting. But right now, it's still a little bit oversold. So. volume is split. So if you're ever questioning it, you know, you just go to, this is pretty elementary, but you just go to the CME, right? Go to markets. Crude iceberg by CL, 150 contracts. So you just click on the product, click on click on quotes, and you just want to see where the most volume is. You can see this is split. This is why it's a pain in the ass, pardon my language. It's like you got 22,000 still in March. You got 29. So tomorrow it'll be a little more. You know, it'll be probably three quarter, one quarter or more. But today it's, it's split, right? Same with crude. Let's see what crude looks like. I mean, it, it, the majority, I mean, the, 
there's more in April, but you still got 120,000. I, I just don't like days like this. It gets it's too convoluted. Crude iceberg by CL, 151 contracts. But we're getting signals, so we will trade them. All right, so this is a brand new setup. I'm going to race this zone. This is done. Not going to go long. Maybe. Let's get this drawn. You can see this is pretty substantial, especially with split volume, right? You got you got almost 300 buy ice here. So I will go long off of this if it... Remember, we need a retest failure, though, because we're below the yellow lug. So let's draw this up. Again, you want to see where it spikes. Get your little cross here. This is where it spiked. Incorporate all the prices that happened in that spike. It's basically that. Awful quiet there, Bruce. You playing in your tin can? Oh, you can. Uh, it should be better now, right? No, yeah, it's not to play. Okay. Just being funny, just making myself <laughs> laugh. <laughs> All right, so this is the zone. ATR is ridiculous. It's 30, 38 ticks. So 38 ticks. 30.4 is 31 is the 80% uh, of the ATR. So first and foremost, because we're below the yellow log, we'll look at that here in a second. Again, we need I need to see 38 ticks above the zone. Retest fail, and I'll get in at 31 ticks, and then my stop will go 31 ticks below the zone. Um, if this breaks, I could get in this aggressively, just as long as we're not right on top of a red or a blue log. Yeah, I'm not, see what I'm talking about? Like, I, I won't short this aggressively, just kind of like I didn't do with the ES, because these are so powerful. I can I can see this coming down here. I, not that I can see it, it happens all the time, and bouncing. So I'm not initiating a short when the lug is this close. Like, if the lug was down here, I would do it. So I will go long on, here's your setup, basically, it's right here. If all ATR retest fail, I'll go long. Short, if this wasn't so close to the lug, I would get in just 80% 80, 80 of an ATR below here but I'm not doing it until we build new lugs, right? So another thing you want to know, you can see this, uh, this market profile, composites. So composites, when I merge the days, the composite is basically 70% of what the day was, and then you merge if they overlap. Um, that's the blue zone, if the days overlap. So when markets get into composites, you expect the move to cover the whole composite. You can see the other day we got in here, and this, this was an alert that you know, if you were looking for longs, see what happened the other day, right? So we got inside here. It could not cover this. This uh, It couldn't get down in here. That was a warning sign. We closed right here. And then look what we did the next day, right? So once again, now we're back in here. It's, the expectation is still down here, right? And I fully expect it now that it got out of here and now it came back. Now I really think it's going to do that. Again, it doesn't mean I won't take longs because we're day traders, but I think by the end of the day or tonight, I think we're going to make it down in here. For some reason, if we do this again and we close like here or outside here, then you can expect another move up, right? So you're just basically coming up with bigger picture thes thesis for the bigger move, right? It doesn't mean I won't take longs in here, right? Because this could easily pop back up here and then go. And that we're day traders again, but just keep an eye on this stuff. Kind of like we said that this is such an important area on what happens here, right? So it's just, you keep this in the back of your mind, you know, so we know we're inside that composite. If this breaks, you probably don't want to be taking longs right here. We're probably going to do that. I mean, if we get down to here, you, you can give it a shot, especially where this directional conviction started. That's the third important area of charting, right? So you just keep this stuff in mind when you're, when you're trading, when you're looking for the bigger move. It doesn't mean you can't have shorter counter moves, right? Smaller counter moves. But you gotta, you gotta know, you gotta know what the bigger picture looks like. All right, so what do we say? 38. So we need to get to 82 here, and that'll be a full ATR. And then we look for a retest failure. So that's how I trade it. It doesn't mean this thing just can't ricochet off of this and just take off, right? But I, well, for below the yellow lug, I wait for retest failure. All right, so once, like I said, we're gonna go tag that liquidity. 
Oh, and, and look at this. Hold on. Let's tag that first. So now this can still this can sell off. Sell CL 170 for contracts. Look what happened. 170 for contracts. So usually you get a bigger bounce, but look what happened. Right? There you go. Once this came back, now the selling resumes. Right? I didn't want to short up here. It's too risky. S and P I iceberg sell ES. Seven iceberg sell ES. Seven hundred contracts. Oh, that liquidity can't be happy. They didn't get their full fill. So a lot of times when you get down to this liquidity, the algos sense this size and they run it away. And that's like, I mean, it looks like it filled a little bit of it, but there's no way they're, they're, they're not happy. They'll get their fill, but I like to see it run away from them. All right, I just heard her set up an ES. Again, if this is confusing today, well, it is confusing because these markets are a little nutty, right? Like, look what just happened there. Popped up, popped back down. Probably a headline. Wait, actually, this is a long setup. I think I just missed this trade. All right, there's obviously, look at this. There's news coming out here. You see this just turned black. The algos just shut off. There's some kind of news. Someone's talking or something's going on here. Anybody knows? That'd be great. I'll turn up the, uh, the headlines. But that's not, I mean, that, the guy, this is why book map is like, if you don't have book map, you just, you don't have all the information. Like you have no idea. It takes one look to know something's going on right now. Look at that. You see how this all disappeared, right? Usually you see that before a number. If you see it in the middle of the day when there's nothing coming out number wise, then you know, there's, there's some kind of headline hitting me, and that's why we did this, right? That's exactly why we just did that. Because some kind of news event came out, and they're still not putting the liquidity back, so somebody's talking somewhere. Yeah, these are treacherous markets, guys. Just, you know, don't trade today. I know it's tempting because it's moving around, but it, it's a lot of it is just nonsensical movement, right? This isn't as bad. And then pulling liquidity, but this still is not in here. So again, somebody's talking. So I'm just going to hold off right now. I'm not going to put on a trade just to put on a trade until something's going on. And I don't see anything coming across the headlines here. Well, we did get an a on that ridiculous headline spike, whatever that was. We did get an ATR. Here's your retest. I really don't want to go on this, but let's see. May seem to be easy to new friend. Yeah, see, it's, 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 it's what you're in store for for the next until this resolves, right? Any any kind of headline, the algos read it and then it just fires and you're, you're screwed if you're on the wrong side. That's the bottom line. All right, so 6 point, 6.08, so six and a quarter points above this zone would be 80% of an ATR. I'll give this a shot, I, you know, because we're on the webinar. I want to. But I'm telling you, this is not, especially that this liquidity is not coming back in here. See how black it is? Someone's still talking, right? So this is a very treacherous trade. If you're, you know, if you're mirroring these trades, just be careful. So the bottom of the zone, or the top of the zone is 325, 325, 925, 950 is entry. Again, I'm not. There's... Yeah, just a note on that. This is not a mirror trading room. Uh... This is uh, just right. I, I, most guys know that, but they still will trade, you know, put on the same trades, which is, you know, fine. But this is more for you guys to learn how to do it yourself. Uh, My point is, if, yeah. you, if you're putting on a trade because of me, be very careful, especially again, look at this. This is just staying black. Somebody is talking something. Yeah, it's not, we don't recommend that at all. I mean, it, it's like peek over, we're peeking over your shoulder and how you are trading. That That's what, what the, the, you know, we really gain, I think, from this. You know this room no i agree i agree but that doesn't mean people aren't doing it <laughs> all right well it's not recommended <laughs> not recommend especially in this environment exactly. so you got your uh atr economy and policy outlook all right so you got your uh, atr here 
we see 82. Here's your retest. So again, the ATR is uh, 37. 36 out of here is uh, 80%, so 74 out along this. Again, treacherous with deadlines. Liquidity didn't really pull in here, though, so crude elbows aren't afraid. And Q stock stock sell and Q 158 contracts. Hey, hey look at that. Look what they got their fill. Who oh, no. knew? Now it could go up. Uh, it's 147. You know, threshold is usually 150. I'll mark it, but. I'd like to see over 200 in here. But now we can go up because the big money got their fill. Like I said, when I was going to put on that shirt earlier, I knew we were probably going to come fill this liquidity, you know, but it, it just wasn't worth it to me at the time because we were so oversold. But, all right, so that's the newest zone. Let's see what happens here. All right, this is still alive for a long, potentially. Again, I don't know what's going on here with the liquidity, why it's still pulled, but we'll see. We'll find out here shortly. And any questions, Bruce? Uh, let's see, no, not really. Yeah, I mean, I haven't really done much, obviously, but it is what it is. Yeah, days like today, you got to be very careful. Yeah, tensions may be easing uh, in eastern Ukraine is what a uh, few people are, headlines people are, are um, uh, quoting here. Yeah, until Ukraine fires mortars again like they did in the middle of the night. So I, I actually screenshot, I was sitting here and I was going to trade it, but it was just, it was, the zone was too ridiculous. I'm sure you guys this here right now. This was last night. Actually, no, that's not the. Let's see. Yeah, look at this. So this, so they came out and said Ukraine's firing mortars. This was like eight o'clock, nine o'clock my time. And look at all this buy ice that came in. You can't see it. Lord. This is like 10,000 buy ice in this area. But it rated the zone was literally. Russell Eichsberg sell alert at RT 151 contracts. The zone was like 22 points wide. So I'm like, I'll just watch it plus with the headlines. But that, that was interesting. And it kind of got smoked <laughs> this morning. Wow. So the stuff still comes in overnight, too. You know, just, all right, we're close to getting filled there. Let's see what happens. And I, I, I still don't know why this Russell is. Russell Light Spurt Cell Alert at RT, 153 contracts. Let's check out the Russell here. I can see that's, that's definitely threshold. Let's see here. All right, so I got filled on that uh, ES long. Again, I'm not real excited about it, but... It is a setup, so I don't, I don't. That's not part of my trade plan. Potential headlines, pulled liquidity, right? So we're long. All right. So then, what do we do next? ATR seven point two three. Is so whoever gave me the ATR thing for Thinker Swim last week, the eighty percent, I still haven't had a chance to, to download that. But thank you. Someone said it was working great. I'll, I'll get that set up for next week. Um, so 5.78, so six points is the ATR, or 80%, so I was six points below here, it's 95.50. That's my stop. 
Again, I don't know what's going on, why this thing's a black hole, but somebody's talking, so this could do this, this could do this, and it has nothing to do with the volume, so. <clears throat> well, I can't believe we filled that liquidity, and then now we can go up. Stunning. All right, so what we can do here, too, if this retest fails, we could go along this setup as well, right? See this. So another way, guys, to trade this, you got to be very careful, though, is when this crosses. So green goes above red, but many times it just like crosses, crosses, crosses. So I just like to make sure I'm not oversold when I'm selling, when I'm buying or selling, right? And again, even that Nasdaq trade, it went a little further, right? But it'd be right back in my face. I mean, I would, I would, what would have happened is if I did short this back over here when I said it was oversold and I got it anyway, well, I, I just would have basically stopped out at, at a scratch because we got a new setup that's bullish. Right, I get out 80%, I would have just scratched the trade, so it was no no big deal. No. I didn't miss anything is what I'm saying. All right, so we could possibly go along NASDAQ as well here. Let's see, this is another reason that I was skeptical of selling right there, oversold, and then you got these two guys here, so this could easily do that now. But remember, we're below the yellow lug, so I need to see ATR retest to, to go along this. Here is 27.7, so like 28, 22.16, 22 and a quarter. So we need to see 27 points out of here, which we got. That's a full ATR. This goes retest failure. I'll go long. Very long ES. filled and crude still bouncing around the sun we did not get an eight here below here so I'll still go along on that let's go what's going on gold let's see so this is that zone in Russell so we are in here you can go along this one as well crude stock CO 310 contracts. All right, so I'm going to cancel that long. Crude stock sell CL, 324 contracts. Right, this is exactly what I was talking about. Crude's in trouble now, right? Look what's happening. We just had 600 stops. We'll mark that up here in a second. Remember I said this needs to hold? Bye-bye. This is the next stop. I buy and know this is where this directional conviction started, right? That's the next stop right there. around 87, 87 quarter. All right, so this long idea is disqualified because we got a new setup. So let's mark this up. That was actually 2300. It's not like you said 300 twice, but <clears throat> either way, it's a new zone. Let's drop this up. Remember, you want to get all the prices that incorporated that zone. So just like this zone, I'll still go long. I don't want to because of what I'm seeing, but I mean, if this thing holds and we get ATR retest fail, I'll go long, but to go short, I just we just need to get new lugs and hopefully, hopefully that move is getting us new lugs in here. And let's see, let's see, we're right at the blue. So actually what I'm supposed to do, remember I said, I, you know, below the yellow lug, I need to see ATR retest, but if we're right at the lug, because these things are so powerful, I will take setups 80% of an ATR out of the zone. So, you know, you have to use some judgment. Though. It's like I don't really want to go long this aggressively off the lug because of what I just showed you guys in the longer term chart, right? This is not a good place to be going long here. 
So you got to use a little judgment, right? It's not most of the time you can just trade these zones by themselves. Again, I showed, I showed in December you can trade these, trade these things by themselves and and, and make money. But you'd be even better using obviously the lugs, which is the second most powerful thing I've seen, and then having some context, right? So you can see here, let's see, it's in my P and L for it since December. Yeah. So that this whole month, all I did. Again, I was I COVID a lot a few of the days. I didn't trade much, but so basically this was all trading nothing but um, the volume setups blindly, meaning just in every one of them, I made sure when a full ATR retest fail, just show the room you can make money just off the volume setups, right? And then what's interesting here too is one, we, we noticed a, a couple of things. I'll get into this in a second. Let's just draw these zones. But a couple of really important things on there. If you guys, the, the, this software is incredible. You go to my website. You can get uh, discounts to it. Click on the banner. We'll go over here to this in a second. Um, there's some really incredible things in it. Like, what's going on here? Look at this. This this liquidity pulled too. And then they just put it back in. take that aggressively I don't want to like you know a lot of times a trade will feel bad to me but I'll still put it on like but you have to use some context do I really want to go along here where I just showed you guys but the flip side this really shouldn't become a bullish setup meaning this should not get 80 percent of an ATR above here if this is truly going to free fall right now right so I'll put on the trade based on the setup based on the blue lug but if I lose on it I, I know why because we're below that high volume note of that prior balance that I just showed you guys so again, uh, it's 24, 80% is, or it's 27.7. Should I take that back? That's not the right ATR. 36.8 is the ATR. That's 29.4. So 30 ticks above here is a is 80% of an ATR. Remember, I'll go long aggressively because we're bouncing off the blue potentially. So we got 30 ticks, so that's 54. That'll be good because that'll be above this prior zone here too. So I will go long here now. I'm just hoping this thing free falls so I don't have to be tempted to put on this long and then we draw new logs and then I can go short. That's what I really want to happen, but <clears throat> we'll see. So you can see the ES here is struggling in this prior zone. I mean, I'm not considering that right here because we got a new setup, but this is why this is struggling right now. We can launch then we should get a good move all right um <clears throat> so what i'm showing you guys here is so i was showing you guys the relative volume the other day i mean a little earlier so this pummeling i took at the beginning of the month was every day like it was like 50 percent of the volume most of the day 50 to 70 percent so you know this is a good warning sign like you know for trading for anybody unless you just like trading ranges that you know when the volume is poor like really poor that's when i struggle right and then the volume picked up and then launch right so another really important thing that i have known this for 20 years and i don't know why i keep doing it look at the hourly here Look at my PL. So my total PL, this is since December. So I switched to Trader Sync in December, right? My PL for last year was like 45 grand or something. Um, but this is, as of right now, this is showing me this is with commission 30,000, 30, right? So this is since the beginning of um, December. I, I still have a couple open. I closed these last night, but um, the one was, this one was basically scratched and I made money on this one. But anyway, this is my PL. So look at this hourly. And if you guys have listened to me before, when I was the you know big scalper, I used to literally leave the office because of this nonsense, right? So look what time look at this. Look at my PL at 10 o'clock. So this is nine o'clock my time Pacific. So this is 10 o'clock uh, central, right? So I used to get up and leave from 10 until 1230. I would come back 
I would go work out, go home. I, you know, this is downtown Chicago. I had a condo right there. I'd go take a nap and come back because of this, right? Because this is where the big money, you know, the big funds, they go to lunch, New York, whatever, they leave. And then that's when the algos start playing their games. And I've known this for 20 years and I still let this happen. So when you have this kind of charting software, you can literally dive down and we'll look at some other things too. Like I'm profitable in every product except for Russell. Well, that should probably tell me, you know, don't trade Russell or trade it smaller. So anyway, look at this P&L at 10 o'clock. So right there alone, that's I would have a double P&L if I just did not trade, did not initiate trades at 10 o'clock. And then here, so between these two is $43,000 of losses. Just if I can just not be trading. And again, I've, this is pathetic because I've known this for 20 years, right? That eliminates and my p and is double, right? So that's, that's one thing. Another thing I noticed, look at this. We went over this in the room the other day. Look at my Mondays. Not good, right? So that should, you know, it doesn't mean you just don't trade on a Monday, right? But if the volume is, is low on a Monday, you may want to trade half size or whatever. Right. If I eliminate that, every other day is basically profitable. You got this little dude here, but this is pretty funny. This is my best day. This is why I did the book map. Um, all right, so this trade is working kind of not. Let's see. All right, so let's get some levels here, and we'll go back to that in a second. Uh, but again, highly recommend you get this. Go to my. I used to use TraderView. This makes TraderView look like it was from the 1800s. This thing is incredible. It tells you everything. We'll come back to this in a second. Um, looks like I'm filled. Once again, magical lugs. This is why I don't short into a lug. Boom. Let's see if I get filled on that. Sure did. All right, so I'm along that now. We said ATR is 80% is 29, so 30 ticks. So I got to go 30 ticks below this price, which puts me at 88.78. So that's where my stop goes. Again, I'm not really excited about being along this based on what we just talked about, but we bounced off the blue lug. And again, if this is you know truly bearish, why did this just turn into a dumb and dumber? Right. Well, long crude, long. Now I'm just waiting for the for the negative headline to. Actually, negative headline is good for crude, so maybe that'll I'll get smoked in the ass, but this should rip. All right. Uh, so now what's next here? So we're we're back at this yellow lug. If this can get above here, I'm gonna watch this first target. See how there's this target there. It's one of the baby lugs, 44.22. I will get out of probably one of them up there if it struggles. So let's see if we can bust through there. But I can see it struggling here. So remember, this market, you know, when you build new lugs, you know, for, to be bearish, it needs to hold directional and prior blue. Well, you see, held prior blue there. So this is really important. If this can launch here, then we're probably going to get up to here. But this could fail again right here. So let's see where we're at. I might take off one here. No, I already missed it. All right. Too late. So I'll just hold it for a baby lug that was up at 22. Let's see if we can get up there. All right, a lot of talking. No questions, Bruce. I need to stop talking for a couple minutes. <clears throat> uh, I've been answering a few of the questions in here. I think I think we're pretty good here. Uh, but uh, maybe you want to talk a little bit about like um, asking here, uh, Quant Leader, if uh, you you do you trade like this in your in your group, uh, live trading. This is in my trading room. Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly what I do in my trading room. So I come in here and I come in at 8 central, 8 to 9.30 usually on the weekdays, every day, except for when I'm in here. And then um, I come back on at 2 o'clock central for the close, 2 to 3 for the close okay. uh, every day, except for Thursdays. I go usually go play golf in the afternoon after this webinar. Uh, but yeah, I do the exact same thing. I go over all this stuff. That's all we do. And then, you know, what the room is supposed to be about and I it's gradually getting there is you know guys sharing setups talking about hey new lugs and this hey there's a there's a thousand lot iceberg and yes that that's what it's you know all about right so this is what it looks like here right so you get 
and you know, guys showing stuff like last night I put in right here. Right, Ukraine firing mortars, gold, gold noise ripping. This is that zone I just showed you in the S. So not very good participation today because I'm probably on this webinar, but you know, this is what I want from this room. Guys posting charts, a new lugs, right? Too close to the red log, stuff like that, right? So that's what the room is. And what's great is it's just part of this, right? Then you just hop back into the book map, right? So it's you toggle in between. All right, so what was I talking about? Um, all right, so we're just long this from long crude. Again, I'm not, this does not feel good based on what I showed you guys, but it is what it is. That's the setup. I took it. You know, I don't trade on feelings, and when I do, this is when I usually screw it up. So I follow my rules, I have my process, and I get in the trade. It doesn't mean it always feels good, right? But it, there's been so many times where I feel like, oh, this is gonna be a loser, and then I follow my, I just follow my rules anyway, and it turns out to be a huge winner. So, so we need this to get above this. Yeah, that's this that's the cr the crazy thing. I mean, like, uh, you know. Uh, uh, your emotions, your like uh, intuition versus numbers, you know. Uh, and, and right. Well, that's the thing too. What's so funny now? Like that's how I made millions of dollars in the past, right? With scalping and my intuition and my feel. Right. I I am not exaggerating. My intuition now is it's almost exactly opposite, and it's you know it's because these algos basically know what what the human mind is doing and what, you know, in these levels and no, here we are and we're breaking out, blah, blah, blah. Like my intuition now, it's basically backwards. So it's like, and that's why I stopped scalping because you can't compete with these algos. So I don't, I don't use intuition, intuition very often. And I mean, I have 24 years of it, right? So it's like, I follow my rules. Again, this felt terrible. It's working out, right? So it's like, my intuition is not, what I'm telling you is don't go by into intuition. Just go by your setups, and your rules, and that's all you can do. Right? Yeah, because I mean, if you start in your making something, you're going to get smoked. Exactly. Now, but you're following it closely because you're trading experience and intuition, and you also know this environment due to the uh, geopolitical tensions is can can flip on a in a, in a second. All right. Yeah. I don't mean intuition like that. I just mean like you know when I put on a trade and say it doesn't go immediately, and I'm sitting here thinking. And this is probably wrong and this is what most traders do right and like it doesn't happen immediately and then they're out and if it starts to pull back then they panic out of it it's like you, you, you use your intuition you know my intuition came up with all these setups and everything else but during the heat of the moment you just want to follow your rules right like this trade feels terrible and it's working out so let's take it from me just you know come up with your rules that's why we do these webinars take stuff from me and you can mold it into your own trade plans right but you want to be more systematic because that's what you're competing against you're competing against nothing but systems that's 80 plus percent of the market probably more than that so you know your feelings are going to get smoked most of the time because you got these systematic programs so be systematic yourself be your own algo right all right um so this is interesting too Another thing that we watch, it's not that drastic, but there is a little bit of a cumulative, and you get this on bookmap too, you get the cumulative volume, but you can see here. So when we were up here, you can see the cumulative volume was at about minus 15,000, 14,000. All that means is there was more, I don't like to say more sellers than buyers because there's always an equal amount, right? Or they wouldn't be able to sell the buyer, the, there would be no buyers and the thing would just air pocket. But meaning cumulative volume is showing you who the aggressor was, right? I mean, some more hitting of bids versus taking of offers, right? So you can see there's more, 15,000 more sellers, more aggressive sellers. So that was more up here. And you can see we came all the way down here and look, look at this, look where we were. It actually increased 2,000 contracts. That, that is interesting alone. You want to be careful with that because I've seen guys trade off of this in random areas and you'll get killed. The other thing too is, this isn't telling you the whole story, right? So just because there's a lot of buyers, okay, or, or there, there's more buyers than the first time, like there's more buyers, we made a lower low from here to here, right? And there's obviously more buyers. Well, what if they're running in a 4,000 sell eyes, right? Because that's the end mark. So you've got to use everything in context, but it's just good to watch, right? It's You want to keep an eye on this because we've seen, especially in important areas, we saw a few times last week, we'd be at the red log and it would look, it would look like this, like we come up right here 
and then we get up to the red lug and then the volume you can the cumulative volume was like down there and then lo and behold boom so just make sure you're using this stuff at important areas not just in random areas like wow look at that divergence i'm gonna go, i'm gonna go long right here because it you, you get killed trust me when i first learned that i tried that and i got killed <laughs> so all right they're buying crew let's get the little water border over here i call these things waterboarding because when it's going against you it's i, I could imagine i've never waterboarded but I'm, I'm assuming that's what it feels like because this is tick strike again another thing that we use and all this is a, again you have the discounts on my website if you want this stuff but this is also really important one it's showing you the stocks if there's some serious buying or selling is going going on in the stocks that comprise the indices these are the highest weighted stocks uh, but what I was getting at, like, you know, so say I'm short here and I'm watching this, right? I just see blue bubble, blue bubble. I see it go against mm -hmm. me. That's hard enough to watch. But then you get to hear, like, this is crude. You get to hear this thing firing off. It's like, I'm assuming, like being waterboarded. So I call it the waterboarder. But it's very valuable, right? I, I know it seems like I have a lot of things, but I really don't. Like, most of the stuff is very simplistic, and that's how I like to trade, right? It's just like, I want to know. And I said, so on this tick strike, it goes from settings from one to 15, one being the most, the least sensitive, meaning it'll just go off nonstop like you saw here. And on this page, I have this set up. So these are all on one. So guys, remember, you can see this, right? So let's go off nonstop. Um, but here, it's only gonna tell me if there's some serious buying going on. So this is an algorithm that takes the speed of the orders and the size coming through and it puts in an algorithm. I've been using this thing basically for like 12 years, right? I used to use it just to alert me of other markets were ripping or you know, moving, but this is really important. So if you come up to an important area and you see these stocks are not doing anything, you may want to get out of some, right? So just another addition. All right, so CS is working. Here we are, baby lug number. I said I was gonna get out of one here if it struggles and see what it does. Just rip through so this is another thing i i'm i was gonna get out one of baby lug right well if these stocks are getting are they're, they're buying the crap out of these stocks well i'm not gonna why would i get out right if this starts to struggle and i don't see these starting to agree and then i see red meaning market selling then i'll get out of one right remember we said this was an, an area so one you just got the cross like i was telling you so we're not overbought so i'm not worried about that right now we're still buy, buying the stocks and then we're at baby luck 23. so i'll give this a second that's where i wanted to get out i just missed it by a couple points but all right so i'm out of one right and i again we came to an important area it was also prior prior volume zone the bottom of this zone here the verse the second double whammy of the day that was a shallow zone and these things weren't going crazy there was a couple but not all of them so i got out of one you can get out of all of them if you want this is how I use this stuff. All right, so now I'm basically going to hold these last two until I don't get out of view app unless it's confluent with a log and there's nothing there. So I'll basically hold it until we get to the red log or if I see an opposing volume event, then I'll get out. And if something comes in bullish, I can, I can add to this trade. Hold on. So what was I talking? You were talking about golfing. <laughs> yeah, that's not too far away. <laughs> I feel like I literally, I don't not feel like I've been talking for an hour and 20 minutes straight. Um, usually I get a break because there's questions. There's just no questions because I, I guess I'm that awesome of an educator. All right, so crew's just kind of hanging, still profitable. Here, here's right, so a, back to the... a question from David um, on um, uh, what's the difference between a three quarters ATR on the 15 minute chart and the ATR uh, on the five minute chart? What's the difference? Well, there's definitely a difference, just like there's a difference between hourly ATR, right? This hourly ATR is at 23, five minute ATR is at 6.79 so you're if you it depends on what time period you're using i i use the five minute atr right i'm a day trader shorter term 
I yeah. rarely use the. I, Go ahead, sorry. I, I mean, I, I know what David's getting at here. He's, he's, he's talking about the math. Um, I, I don't know, David, if you if you uh, quickly go through and do an ATR on, the, on a 15 minute chart and compare it to a five minute, three quarters of it on a 15 minute versus five. I, I see what he's saying. So he's yeah. saying he's saying I'm using 80 percent. So he's saying compare 15 em. minute. Right. Just use just use the flat ATR, the, the full ATR for a 15 minute. That could that might work. I don't know if it does. Let me know. But um, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be different at, at certain points. I mean, if you're seeing the exact 80 percent of a five minute ATR as a full 15 minute ATR and it's always that, then use a 15 minute ATR. Yeah, I, I would imagine that they'll probably you'll probably see a difference because the, the averages are going to be different. But uh, try it out. Uh, right. Yeah, you can use whatever you want, guys. This is this is what I use, right? So the whole point of these webinars isn't, once again, to mirror my trading. It's not necessarily to do exactly, you know, you don't have to trade like I trade. You can say, hey, I like that. I like that I, that he's using. I don't like that. I'm indifferent on that. And then you come up with your own trade plan, right? You never want to just try mirroring. Guys, even if I gave you, you know, buy here, sell here, stay it. 95% of the guys on here, guys and girls, would still screw up the trade, right? Because you'd be like, yeah, I don't think so. I'm gonna, this isn't going to keep going. I'm out, right? It's like it's almost impossible for you to follow exactly what I'm saying. I can give you the exact system, which I'm giving you, and most traders will still screw it up, right? So you want to make it to be your own, your own stuff and add in what you think is relevant. You may have other stuff that you use. You just want to be careful with having 55 things on your chart because you're never going to make sound decisions or consistent decisions, right? Because there's always going to be some conflicting data. I know it seems like I'm using a lot of stuff, but I'm really not, right? It's like volume, SI volume, book map, number one. Lugs, number two. Um, structure, all oh, structures, number one, too. You want to know where we're at in the bigger picture, right? So that's, you know, those three things are the main things I use, right? And then I'll use, again, like, you know, I'll keep an eye on the edge, like I said, right? Well, relative volume, you want to keep an eye on the relative volume to make sure it's not Algo City. Then you want to keep an eye and make sure you're not initiating trades. You know, you may not, obviously, not like I always have this, but I don't like to initiate trades if we're overbought or oversold. That's not that technical. And then I use tick strike. Tick strike's just telling me what the, you know, if the stocks are agreeing or not. Or, and, and it lets me know, like right now, I'm not, so I'm staring at this market. Well, this is crude, it's rolling, but say I, I'm watching this. I have no, I'm not, my eye's not on crude. This is why I use these things in the first place. I know they're buying crude. It's pretty, you know, we're at 11. So that gives, hey, heads up. Okay, wow, they're buying crude. Okay, so then I bring it over, right? So it's pretty simplistic. I know it seems like I have 45 things, but I really don't. And they're not conflicting at all. They're all basically, most of the time, they're agreeing with each other. All right, let's see where we're at in crude and see if we can peel out of one or two of these. Uh, nothing here. So, you know, I will hold this to at least the directional look. Right? There's nothing here. There's VWAP. You may like to get out of VWAP. I'll get out of VWAP if it's confluent with something else, like a lug. Here's another area where you want to watch, right? So that's actually probably confluent with VWAP. Let's see. VWAP is here. Yeah, so I will get out of one there. Not cause, just because of VWAP. VWAP is important, and you can use that in your trading, obviously. But look, it's the top of this market profile composite, right? Right there. So if this gets around 90, 20, 90, 30, and it starts struggling, I'm going to get out of one. Because what, what I still think is going to happen here... Bryce said, even though I think we're going to tag the bottom of this by today or tonight, doesn't mean we can't do a short-term rally. And that's what we that's why I got long, right? But I can see this struggling here and then turn around and doing that. Right. So again, we're day traders. It could doesn't mean you can't take longs like I did. Didn't feel good, but I can see it definitely stopping here and then doing that eventually. So I will get out of one or two here if it gets up to this area. Well, you know, I'm still on here. Either way, I'll still get out of one or two there. So we'll see what happens there. So I covered one and you see, boom, quick, six points. So I'm holding on to this. There's been nothing new, right? No reason for me to get out of the trade. Let me get rid 
of this zone. It's annoying me. These were all zones from the open, right? And then new ones came in, so I don't, I'm not trading off them anymore. If we can get above this, th this is going to be key, right? If we can clear these two, then we're going to rip. Well, not necessarily, because then, then you had all this ice that got smoked last night. Remember I showed you? This is this is going to be hard to rally. You got spot gamma levels, right? This is basically where this ice started coming in from last night. It was from 60 to 40. So I could definitely see a return to this and then a failure. So keep an eye on this stuff, especially if this stuff is confluent with other areas like logs, market profile, stuff like that. Anyway, I've said 4030. Yeah, see, I mean, this red lug would be smack dab in the middle of where all that ice came in. So if we happen to get up here and we start struggling, I don't need to see the exact lug. You know, like if we get up into this area and, again, this is barring a, a bearish setup. A bearish setup, I'll get out immediately, right? But say nothing happens and we make it all the way up to here, watch this area carefully because I'm telling you, this ice, all this iceberg is like 10,000 icebergs that got smoked right and held in here and this is exactly where it was smoked so now we're coming we come back into there the guys that held on for dear life comes back they're out of their trades and that leads to the next wave down that's the whole idea of retest failure all right any more questions bruce I'm definitely running out of gas i don't remember talking this much straight through without any kind of questions or anything uh, no, I look. I mean, we're, we've we've got uh, most of them answered in here. I, I kind of knew the answers to a lot of them, so I we just kind of went went forward with it. Um, but uh, no, I think I think we're all good. All right. Um, so yeah, there was something else I was going to show you guys with this pin. I can't remember now. Just take a quick quick gander. See symbols. This so I was going to show you too. Right? You see, I'm down a little bit, but this is my biggest losing product. This actually is wrong because I had a. It's actually profitable. I haven't traded bonds much, but I had a trade on last night and I got out the red log. I'll show you that here. That's this. Right, so I'm actually profitable in ZP. I've only traded it like two or three times. That was last night's trade. I was long based on the setup at the close, and then look what we did. This is right when that news came out, and this is right where I got out of this trade. Popped up here, and got out, and then it did that while I was sleeping. And I, I looked at it and overnight, I'm like, wow, that was a good exit. Oh, it's like these lugs are magical or something. Let's see, this should be new lugs too. Let's see here. Come on. Yeah, new lugs. Uh, so anyway, this is my worst product. So when you do this, we looked at the we looked at the hourly, right? You smart people say, "Hey, you know what? I dropped forty-five grand at this time. I might not want to trade at that time of day. I might want to go work out, get away from the screens, and come back when the trade picks up. This is when the algos kick in. I've known this for twenty years. This is not acceptable, right? I still make stupid mistakes too. So that's the first one. Let's see, weekdays. I may want to be careful on. Oh, I trade on Mondays, especially if the volume is not rocking and rolling. Throwing away money on a Monday. Like this is not, you know, rocket science, right? And then symbols, you know, the volume setup's working all markets, you know, and I, I've missed some really big trades in here. So, I, you know, I know this is, this would be profitable too. I just happened and this is shorter term too, right? So I know overall, you know, this is a profitable product too. Do you, but do you, do you have any data on uh, a question asked here about uh, which setups uh, are working best, like uh, your stop and hold or broken ice? I sure do. Oh, if that's once I can go in here and add on my. So you can see here, it, this is just so daunting for me because I'm doing my room and then it's like I talk all day and then I, I'm doing stuff and then at the end of the day, you get it. Don't get me wrong, you need to do this and I've been better at it. Like yesterday, I had these winning trades and I actually went in here. You can see even right here. Let's see, I just haven't uh, inputted them yet, right? But like, let's see. Uh, 
right? So I went in here yesterday and I actually documented all these, right? So let's, so this was the, here, I'll show you the setup I got long yesterday. Let's bring that up. Oh, that's slugs, wait. So this is the sixth wonder of the world, my sixth setup. I'm, I'm coming up with a new course to add these and everything else, all everything new that will be incorporated. Um, but this was the setup, right? So I need to do this for every trade. It, the problem is I'm doing these webinars, right? The way you do this, if you're, you know, you're trading on your own and you're not talking to people all day long, right? You, you come in here and when you get a setup, why is this not working? So let me draw on this. But anyway, here was a setup. You had, this was the rare unicorn. This we call Step Brothers, and the room came up with it. This is a whole other thing, but I'll, I'll, I'll go over it quickly. Anyway, there was a huge stop run and buy ice. You can't really see, it's kind of condensed here. That's this purple zone, the unicorn zone. You had a move away, a retest. I actually got long here, right in the middle of the zone, because we talked about this in the room again. This is not, my, my normal entry is this. This is why I added here, but I got in here because it was, it was, um, it was uh, confluent with VWAP, daily value area, and the yellow luck. So I was willing to give it a chance there. But anyway, this was the normal entry, and we caught the move up. And then this 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 happened here. This stop run was a dumb and dumber, and I got out. Um, but my point is, I get off track very easily. The point is that I need to go back in here. So if you're trading on your own, every time you put a trade, screenshot what you saw on book map, screenshot whatever else you're looking at, then you come in here, and you put in, this is what's so great about this, and you could put in your trades, right? So let's find one. I, I started doing this early on in December, and let's find a good one. Not a good one, one I actually did. Let's see. This software is unbelievable. Trader Sync, again, go to my website that you have discounts to it. Let's see. Crude ICL, 152 CL, 152 contracts. Right, and that's, that's at that uh, market profile, right? So let's see what happens here. I know I'm jumping all over the place, guys, but I got to... If this fails, I'm out. I mean, I'm out of probably two of them because this is that market profile high that we just talked about. And I know there's, that must be in uh, March. Hold on a second. I'm getting out of two right ICL, here. ICL, 150 ICL, 150 contracts. Oh my God, I feel like I'm all over the place today. Um, so I have a feeling this was in March. Yep. So this, this is why I hate trading the role. You, you're getting split volume. Look at this, this is still in March. This is 200 icebergs, right? So again, why did I get out there? Because there are two of them. BWAP, confluent with, um, I don't know why this is not drawn for me now sucks anyway confluent with this right here so this could launch out of there and i'll hold it right i'll hold it up and we'll watch see what it does at the directional log but if this fail this could easily fail right here too vwap and then come back which i think it might do but that's why i'm getting out of two of them not because i think something just because we're at an important level and especially you know if you want to draw this zone up in uh, march you can still trade off of it right that's this it was by ice i'm not going to color right now but there you go so that was profitable and that felt like remember i told you how bad that felt did i trade about trade on what i felt i saw in, in my rules my rules nice trade right my intuition is literally backwards in these markets with the algos now and how it draws i don't i don't understand what's going on here uh all right i'm out of gas what was i think i was showing you one other thing and then i'm I just keep going on these tangents showing you guys oh i was going to just show you one how you can do that, how you can utilize this. Right, so I think this one was a book map webinar. Well, yeah, right here. <clears throat> so this one I actually did. It's just back to my original point. It's you want to do this stuff right when it's occurring because if you wait to the end of the day, then you got to replay the book map. You know, if you shut it down, you got to replay the setup. You got to come with all your charts, but this is exactly how you guys need to do this, right? You show the setup. Here you go. That's that. Here's here's the ice. This was on a book map webinar too. So if you want to see this exact setup, go to this day and you can watch it. This was what uh, December what? Can't see it on here. Why can't I see the day? 
we'll check that in a second. But anyway, this is what the five minute looked at. Like I'm just showing where I entered the trade. You want it, guys, you do this enough, then you're gonna just start seeing these areas and you're gonna come up with playbooks. You're like, it's go time, it's go time. Here's my setup, this is what this looked like. That was here. See, we're breaking out of the market profile. So this is the stuff that you wanna record. So what I was saying is it's just a lot for me because I'm taught, I'm doing the webinars. I can't do all this. And then I got to go back after the close. If I've got like five or 10 trades for the day, I got to do this for every trade. So I'm way behind, but I'm going to go back at least my, you know, going forward and probably for the last, for February, I'm going to go in and do that for every trade here, right? Every meaningful trade. But this is very important guys to track your trades, track your setups, but you can see I just screwed that up, but I, I did have those labeled, right? So actually, let's go here just quickly and see what it says. Uh, I have not yet. I got to learn this, too. I haven't been using this anywhere near like it should be. Where I thought there was a set up. Let's see what this says. Right. Again, this is only a couple of them, but then you're going to see stop and hold, a minus stop and hold, meaning it was a sell stop run that helped, Titanic. So that means sell ice, right? And you're going to see exactly what they, remember, this is only a couple setups. Once I get a couple months in here, then we'll be able to look at these. But I'm telling you, this software is incredible and I need to use it more. That's the moral of the story. All right, I'm out of gas. I uh, got a couple of these. You know, I'll hold this last one. If I see a better setup, I'm out. Actually, I will be out based on this crude, I mean, on this uh, March contract. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Obviously, I'm trading in April, but if this gets an ATR below here, or 80% of an ATR below here, the equivalent, I'm going to get out of that Jan that uh, April contract. Hopefully, that makes sense. Tomorrow will be better where it's not split volume, but um, you could trade short off of that too. But we're not going to get into that right now. So that, and then I'm still along this. So I'll hold on to this, and that's all I've done today, basically. And then I was short the matter. That was long than as I earlier. For short, I can't remember now. <laughs> it feels like three days ago. All right, guys, covered a lot today. You know, the whole idea of these webinars is to teach you guys, and you know, you pick the stuff that you think is important and kind of mold your own trading style. Yeah, yeah, excellent, excellent stuff, Scott. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I mean, uh, like I said, it's just a, 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 a treat to kind of peek over your shoulder. Uh, the way you're uh, managing all these, jumping in, jumping out, um, your reasons behind it. Um, really, really good stuff. Thank you. You know, I'm just hoping you guys are learning something. You know, I make mistakes too, but, you know, even in my room when I do dumb stuff, the guys are at least, you know, it hurts to lose, but at least I'm teaching, hopefully, guys like, hey, don't do this, right? Don't be me doing this. So example we were talking about yesterday, I keep getting, as you guys all know, if you've been on these books, I keep getting stopped out to the tick. I don't give a, or entering to the tick and then it rips. I don't care where I put it, 80% of ATR, 75, 50. And they saw yesterday, like I let that start getting to me, right? And you know, I'm human. And I, that for some reason is my biggest, that is the one that pushes me over, that, that is what triggers me. And I start going down this rabbit hole and I start, and if I have a losing trade, then it's like I spiral out of control mentally, right? So. You know, they get to see that, like, wow, you know, he's kind of an idiot too sometimes, right? So it's like, and then, hey, you know, I'm not going to do that. If I get triggered, I'm going to walk away from the screen, things like that. So that's what the trading room is for. That's what this these webinars are for too. So even if I you know have losing trades or make mistakes, you guys can learn, hopefully learn from them. Yeah, yeah. Andrew Andrew has a quick comment in here. CL April contract is, is roughly 20 ticks higher. Uh, so um, anyway. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can pretty much draw the zone equivalent if you want, right? Basically, just do this and yeah, just figure out where that's at. You can see the crosshair on here, right? I just draw the zone, and then if it moves an ATR below there, get out. All right. Tomorrow will be better again. You know, I just this happens one or two days a month when they when these contracts roll, especially crude. And just be aware of it. All right, guys. Um, I will. We'll see you next. Thursday. We'll see you next Thursday. Th thanks again, Scott. Appreciate it. Okay, take care. You too. Uh, guys, we're going to roll over into the uh, next room with uh, uh, Tom B. So uh, look for that. Uh, he'll be starting pretty pretty soon.
uh, you know, somewhere between uh, right now, these webinars end and then about 12 o'clock, somewhere, somewhere in there, uh, you, you'll see Tom B uh, start to start to come in. So, uh, yeah, take a look for that and uh, good stuff over there. And uh, we will catch up with you tomorrow with the advanced webinar after that.